We've not learned in a little while. We're learning tonight. Next week, unlikely. Oh, no. Yes. Next week, Wednesday night. Yes. Also 7 o'clock. But board meeting, anything after after Marv. And we're going to stay on Wednesday nights for a little while. And probably after the Yom Tovim, we'll switch back to Monday nights. That's supposed to be our night. But because of different things that have happened over the course of this year, we got thrown off this way and that. So uh, a brief review. Of course, we're talking about the various Roshe Hashanah, the last one that we talked about, which began really on Daftet Amidbet, was the element of planting and when things take root such that we can consider the arrival of Tishrei, Aleph Tishrei, to be the uh, onset of a new year. The question was, how much time do you need? And the implications here were manifold. Firstly, in terms of if it's a year of Shemitah or not, is this Natiya or Havracha or Harkava? Those are three different things. Remember, Havracha is taking the branch, putting it into the ground, covering it with earth until it sprouts new roots, and then you're cutting off the original branch because it's no longer needed to feed the new sapling, which now arrived. It's not a sapling. It's really the branch that grew, grew a new stalk. Natiya is just putting a sapling in the ground. Har, harkava is uh, is grafting. That's where you take a branch and you tie it to another branch or put two of them together and you peel away the bark, presumably, so the two of them end up, one grows out of the other one in the end and it's sustained by that. If it's inside of 30 days before Shemitah, you can't use the, whatever the fruits are. You have to uproot the, the, the planting in any of these three ways because it did not have enough time and we're in the zone, what's called Tosefet Shvit. That's not allowed. Remember? Who's going to grow that quickly? Uh, no, the point is if you plant it within 30 days of Shemitah, even when it, whenever it will grow, you can't use it. Oh. Yeah. And in fact, the plant would have to be uprooted immediately on Shemitah. <laughs> it would be in a favor to keep it. There was an implication in terms of Orla. And uh, the implication for Orla is whether you could assume that one year elapsed in the span of that period of time prior to Rosh Hashanah, 30 days before. If it was 30 days, we say it was as if it was a year, so you're already in the second year. You remember that in that conversation, we saw we saw Shitat Rashi, essentially, that that's where Tubishvat came in. Mm -hmm. That even <clears> though <throat> you did this thing with the extra month, where one month was accounted like a year, we still make you wait when you get into year, what would be year four, we wait until Tubishvat of that year. Uh, and so it is for the, the year after that to get from the fourth year to the fifth year, Tubishvat becomes the new the new line. If you actually planted uh, uh, um, not within 30 days, not a Shemitah year, regular year, and then the therefore when Rosh Hashanah came, it wasn't a new year. You have one, two, three full years. So then Rosh Hashanah can stay that day. And then there's a discussion whether it also has to be pushed to the following Tubishvat. This is all review. We did this already. In that context... We had a conversation on Daf Yud Ahmed Aleph, which was the question of um, how many days into a year might be counted as a full year. And the the analog was in the world of um, in the world of Korbanot. Um, we had an idea that um, Rabbi Meir held, unlike the Tanakama that was on the bottom of 9b, that you need 30 days. Rabbi Mayer sounds like he's saying you need one day. And he thinks one day before Rosh Hashanah would be like the whole year. Now, maybe Rabbi Mayer would say, well, if it's a year going into Shemitah, no, there you need 30 days because it's Tosefet Shvit. But Rabbi Mayer seems to hold one day out of a year. So in other words, if on the 29th day of uh, Tishrei, the sun is setting on the 28th. So as the sun is setting, you start, you plant the last day of the year. Uh, of Elul, sorry. So, yeah, yeah, sorry, 28, sorry, 28 Elul. So, right, as the sun is setting, so you get a full day of 29 El, uh, Elul. And then it comes to Shana. Rabbi Meir thinks you have, uh, you have a, a, you're in year two. Um, so that's on Daf Yud Amid Alf. And that's actually the last thing that we had seen inside. We said, Alema Deluk Rabbi Meir. That's how we got there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines down from the top on 10A. And we need this for the flow of the Gemara to understand the new material tonight. It's good to review anyway, and it's been a little while. So Lehman, the look, Rabbi Mayer, the Rabbi Mayer, Ha'amar Yom Acha B'Shana Chashiv Shana. He thinks one day is considered an entire 
year has elapsed. Ditanya, since we learned in Abraita, Par Amur Batora Stam Ben Esrim Arba Achodesh V'Yom Echad Divrei Rabbi Meir. When the Torah describes that you need for a, a korban to bring a par, what is defined as a par? Says Rabbi Meir, an animal that is three years old. But what is three years old? Twenty-four months plus one day, because you're into the third year. And if you think that's strange, how many people here wait into the sixth hour after Fleshix? I do. So into the what is into the sixth hour? See, yeah, 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 you're into the sixth hour. It's almost the sixth hour. That's what he holds. He holds it's mamash one day. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Ben Asim Arba Chodesh Vilamid Yom. He thinks, no, you need at least a month. Notice that nobody holds that for a par, you literally need an animal that has had a 36 month lifespan. 24 months plus something, a smaller unit. Is that unit a day? Uh, is that unit a month? Shehaya Rabbi Meir Omer, Kol Makom Shinamar Egel Batorah, whenever it refers to a calf in the Torah, Stam Ben Shana. That means one year. It has to be one year old. Uh, ben Bakar, Ben Shtayim, Par, Ben Shalosh. All right, now, but based on what we just said now, the Egel can just be a few days old. It can't be, it can't be immediately because remember, it has the first seven days as it is an eighth day, right? That's that's in, in the part we read all the time at the beginning, Shor Chasev. Remember? Oh, so, late, keep late, right? so, so there's Otov at Beno, and then you have the issue you need, it has to be at least eight days old before you can bring it as a Korban. The point is, that's an Egel. Ah, it's one year old? No, it's almost one year old. It's not almost, it's only a few days old. Good enough. For Rabbi Eliezer, sounds like you need a month. Uh, uh, for the Ben Bakar, that's two years. It's not literally two years, it's actually a year and some other sh much shorter span of time. And the Par, Ben Shalosh, that's what it means. So the Gemara entertains possibility. No, you know what? Maybe you could say that this whole idea about the counting and that you need 30 days prior to Rosh Hashanah in order to account the that as the first year when Rosh Hashanah, the first Rosh Hashanah comes, maybe it does work even according to Rabbi Meir. Why? Maybe, I feel, so we said, Gemara entertains, I feel the tame Rabbi Meir. Maybe Meir held, held this way. You know why? Because Ki Ka'am Rabbi Meir, Yom Echad, B'Shana, Chashuv Shana, B'Sof Shana. When did he hold that that was true? When it came out on the end of a year, right? It's appended to some year that already exists. Right? Lo, he didn't hold of it that way. So lo, right? He didn't agree when it was the, the beginning of a year. In other words, when we say that the par is three years old, and Mayor says, well, it means 24 months plus one day, that's because 24 months have elapsed and now the plus one goes into the third year. But but in our case that we started with on nine B, which we did to the top of ten A, we said that the the, the Tanakhama just said you need thirty days prior to arrival of Tishrei in order to allow that period of time to be called a year. So the Gemara entertains. So maybe Rabbi Mayor agrees to that because Rabbi Mayor says I don't think that a day really equals a year. I'm saying it's into the third year equals like a third year. But if no years have happened yet. One day of the previous year does not a year make. The Gemara wants to entertain. It's going to reject it now. Be you understand the logic? Maybe on the way out of the year, we have two years, and we're into the third year, right? And 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 maybe and maybe that obtains only after when, when it's coming on the heels of some amount of time that's elapsed. But if it's still prior to the onset, even of one year, you're not going to say one year elapsed. It's not in its first year because it didn't have any part of that year, like a day on the tail end of the year before. That's not going to work. The Gemara rejects this. So, Amarava, uh, Velav Kal So the Gemara says, well, Rava says, well, maybe isn't this all Kal V'chomer? Uma Nida, this is still a proof, actually. She'en t'chilat hayom ola la b'sofa, sof hayom ola la b'tchilata, shana shimachat ola la b'sofa, eno din, next page, Shiyom echad ola b'tchilata. <clears throat> Rava says, let's say a woman becomes a nida at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, in the biblical setup of nida, not how we practice it today, because we have an amalgamation of two systems, nida and, Z and zava. But let's say in the original system, nida was always exactly seven days. A woman became a nida, count seven days, no matter what's going on. She's bleeding, she's not, it doesn't matter. Once you hit seven days, she go to the mikvah. 
Okay, so that, that's what Rav is talking about. Again, not what we do today, because today we have the calendar of the of the Nida and the Zava are actually amalgamated, essentially. Not for I don't want to go more into it. It's going to take us off topic, but just to say, if the woman becomes a Nida at 10 in the morning on a, on a Thursday, so you count up seven days, when you get to the next Wednesday, she can't say, well, I got to 10 o'clock in the morning. So see, seven days have elapsed. Rather, what happens? She has to wait until sunset on the seventh day because she doesn't go to the mikvah during the day. So she waits till the nighttime, Wednesday night, which is a luckily Thursday. However, let's say the same woman, sunset is six o'clock, and she became a nida at 545. So halachically, Rabbi points out, isn't that considered like an entire day? Yes, it is. That's considered day one. So it's on Wednesday. She became a nida at 545. Sunset was six o'clock. So already Wednesday night and Thursday is day two, three, four, five, six, and then Takim. She goes to the mikvah a night earlier. Understand? Is that what's going on? No. So Rava, sa Rava says, wait, there is an analog to this that maybe you see there is another kind of a case where on the way into account, just a fragment of a day. So Rava's saying, well, maybe Rabbi Meir holds, even a fragment of a year, maybe one day in a year going into the Rosh Hashanah, maybe that is counted like an entire year. The same way that Anida, who becomes Anida 15 minutes before Shkia, that day is considered the first day of her Nidos. Question? Yeah. Using your example. It's Rava's example. I gave many the times. Starts at 10 in the morning. She becomes a Nidos. Yep. Five foot or that's case one. Case two, five forty five. Let's say. Yeah. And six o'clock is Shkia. Shkia. She still is going to go to the mikvah on And you, and you yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the, the Sorry, okay. I, 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 I didn't give a good example. Let me fix it. Sorry. If she became Anita at ten in the morning on Wednesday, then the next week you're going to count up seven days. It's Tuesday when you get to day seven, right? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So ten a.m. on Tuesday. That's seven days have elapsed from ten a.m. to ten a.m. But she doesn't go to the mikvah till Tuesday night. But let's say, let's say, in the other case. She became a nida at, uh, but but really by by the number of days, it already was seven days, wasn't it? Seven days went by, ten a.m. to him. But but if it was the day before, I should have said it that way. So Wednesday should be Tuesday, five forty-five, and sunset is six o'clock. Tuesday's day one. So then Wednesday's two, three, four, five, six, seven. She goes a night earlier. But, but that's what is troubling to me. I don't see the difference between 10 in the morning and 545 because she cannot go to the mikvah mm -hmm. until a week later at night. Right, that's what he was just that's, saying. That, that's correct. And I'm not suggesting otherwise. I'm not suggesting otherwise. Rava's point is that in a case where one became Anita 15 minutes before sunset, so on a Tuesday at 545 she became Anita, and then sunset was 6 o'clock, Day one of the Nidud is, is Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, Sunday, Monday night. She can go to the mikvah. Yeah. Whereas if she had become a Nida at 6 35 p.m. This, on, the, on that Tuesday night, right? Yeah, but that's the next day. That's a whole Rava's point is just to say, don't you see that there could that we have within halacha the idea that going into the transitional point from one day to another, even though you have a tiny fragment before that transitional moment, you're willing to accord that as if it was an entire day. So too, so too, maybe Rabbi Mayer, when he says one day is like an entire year, maybe he did mean it in the world of, of, um, of, of, of planting. Maybe one day before Rosh Hashanah, if you planted something, maybe he did mean that, because the Gemara first said, no, we'll say it doesn't follow Rabbi Meir, right? Because Rabbi Meir holds one day, and you see here that the Tanakhama said 30 days. So we say, no, 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 no. If you want to hold like Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir maybe only holds that one day principle. You could say that that's what the Gemara did, right? I'm trying to trace it, but maybe I'm not doing a good job here. 30 days are required for something to be considered a whole year as having elapsed. All of Elul, the thing has to be planted, all of Elul. But then the Gemara says, but that doesn't accord with Rabbi Meir. That must be Rabbi Eliezer's position because Rabbi Meir holds that one day would have been enough. Not that it is. The Gemara says, no, maybe this 
also, which doesn't have a name on it. There's no challenger in it. Maybe Rabbi Mary also agrees to this. He also says you need 30 days prior to the arrival of Rosh Hashanah. Do you know why? Because when did Rabbi Mayer hold that one day is like an entire year? That's when it's a day coming on the heels of a certain number of years of elapsed. We'll extend the year because you're into that year. You're into the sixth hour. You're into the fourth year. You're into the third year. It's like it's the third year already. And when the Torah says the par has to be ben shalosh, it doesn't mean literally three years of its life have elapsed. It means two years plus a day. Yeah, that's that that's that's what it means. By the way, when does a boy become a bar mitzvah? In his fourteenth year, thirteen years plus a day on his birthday. He's completed thirteen years the day before. On his birthday, it's actually the first day of the 14th year of his life. Then Rava said, no, wait a minute. That's not a good argument because I can show you that within halacha that actually there is an idea that when it comes to, isn't it a, isn't it a kava chomer? When it comes to nida, the, the fact that the, the tchilat hayom will not count at the end, will not help her to get out of the nidut, leaving aside the business about going to the mikvah, going to the mikvah um, uh, nighttime, not daytime. When she retains the Nita status the entire seventh day. Right. And not just because she can't go to the mikvah because of the Xera that women go at night, but because we say that if it was 10 o'clock on Wednesday, she became a Nita, so seven days later, Tuesday, all of Tuesday, she's still in the daytime. When the nighttime comes, that's when she could go to the mikvah. We don't say it goes by 8 to 8. But if this same woman... Tuesday, 5.45, became a, uh, became a Manida. Then Tuesday, 6 o'clock was sunset. Tuesday was day one. And then it, it ends up, she goes to the mikvah an entire day earlier. So mm -hmm. Rava said, ain't no de right? So if we say, Uman Nida, three lines up from the bottom on page 10a, Velav Kavachomer, who, Uman Nida, she'en tchila tayom olela, olala besofa, the beginning of the day will not count to her at the end of the of the count. Sofayom ola bitchilata, but yet the end of a day will count, right towards the the beginning of her count. In other words, she became a need at five forty five on a Tuesday, and now it's six o'clock on Tuesday. The sun sets. That was counted as day one. She's already up to day two. Only fifteen minutes went by, but all right. So so then we say so then we say shana shiomechat ola b'sofa. If an a, a, a day would be accounted at the end. With regard to the to the par, you're in the thirtieth. Uh, you're in the first day of the tw of the third year. Se'ena din shiyam echad ola b'tchilata. For sure, Rabbi Meir holds, according to Rava, that 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 one day that that one day before Rosh Hashanah, if you planted this thing, it would be like the whole year had elapsed. For sure, he holds that. So rather, the Gemara says ve'elamai. Rather, what's the uh, what, what what's what's going on here? Yeah. But rather what? Rabbi Eliezer, Shloshim Shalosh Bai. Really, what's going on here is that Rabbi Eliezer requires 30. Uh, 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 sorry, Shloshim Ushloshim Bai. Sorry. He needs 30 and 30. Ditanan, because we learned. Ain notin, ve mavrichin, ve markivin, erev shvi, pachem, shloshim, yom, lifner, rosh hashanah, ve mnata, ve hivrich, ve hirkiv, ya akor. This is actually supposed to be over here. Uh, uh, it doesn't say Diva Rabbi Eliezer, right? Uh, and then it says Rabbi Yehuda Omer Kol Arkava Sheena Kolatet BeGimel Yamim Shuv Ena Kolatet Rabbi Yosef Shimon Omrim Shtei Shabbatot Rabbi Nachman Amar Raba Bar Avul Diva Omer. Oh, sorry, let me stop. Let me stop right there. When Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Meir square off about do you need thirty days or one day, neither of them is talking about the question. Uh, per se, about the last 30 days before the arrival of Shemitah. Everybody agrees there has to be at least 30 days before Shemitah that nothing gets planted. Otherwise, you have to rip it out. And, What's and a day is defined as a 24-hour period? Is yes. That what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't think we say Mixedem Kekulo here. I don't think we say that. So Rabbi Eliezer holds you need 30 plus 30. Rabbi Eliezer says you have you need when Rabbi Eliezer says in order to make it, in other words, now we're learning something new. In the year leading up to Shemitah, you have to plant whatever you're planting 60 days prior to, to, to Rosh Hashanah. How come? 30 days so that it'll take root, and then 30 days to Sefat Shvit that it's sitting 
an extension of Shvit. There are 60 days in total. And that's and according to this Brighta, uh, uh, that from a uh, Mishnah, really, from a Sechet Shvit, right? The Tnan. You can't do any of the plantings, right? Within 30 days, period. If you did any of these things, you have to uproot it. Rabbi, Yo, Rabbi Yehuda says that Harkava will take root. Koletet means it's 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 um absorbed within the ground, meaning it's connected to the ground. The roots take take root in three days. If it didn't happen in three days, it's not gonna happen. Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon say you need two weeks. Yotzei said, by the way, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, oh, you get well, we're going to get there in a minute. Hold on. So the Gemara says, "Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Baravu, Al Adiver HaOmer Shloshim, Tzarech Shloshim, U Shloshim." You need thirty plus thirty. That's Rabbi Yehuda's Shita. Remember, it says you need thirty days uh, for something to be in the ground in order to be accounted like it was a whole year. It doesn't mean thirty days before Shana. I mean thirty days before you're not allowed to plant anymore. So sixty days before. The Adiver HaOmer Shlosha, whoever holds three days. We, we saw that just now. That's uh, Rabbi Yehuda. Tzarech shlosha u'shloshim. You need 33 days. L'divya omer shtei shabatot, tzarech shtei shabatot u'shloshim yom. You need 45 days. V'inami ki Rabbi Yehuda svarele gimel u'shloshim bai. So so then according to Rabbi Yehuda, you're going to get, you need 3 and 30. El Olam says the Gemara Rabbi Meir. No, no, this is Rabbi Meir. This is what Rabbi Meir holds. When he said Shloshim, right? When he said 30, he meant Laklita. He meant it meant for it to, to be uh to be connected to the ground. If so, so at least according to Rabbi Meir's Shita, who said one day, remember he kept saying one day before, he must hold Lamed Alf boy. He needs 31 days, one day for it to take root, and 30 days for it to be. Sitting fallow prior to the arrival of the next Rosh Hashanah uh, of of of, uh, of Shvit. So Kasavar, but Rabbi Meir holds Shloshim Yom. Sorry, Yom Shloshim Ol Lakan Ol Lakan. We had this already with Rabbi Meir previously uh, with Rabbi Yehuda. It's a similar idea with Yovel. Remember, did he count for both sides? So here he holds that the the thirty days. One of those thirty days is that it. It's counted like the whole year because it was planted. And the other 30 days, that's the Rita Tsefet Shvit. I'm Rabbi Yochanan Ushneim, meaning between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Eliezer, do you need 30 days or do you need one day? Mikra mm Echadarshu. -hmm. They're looking at the exact same Pasuk, interpreting it differently. Vayihi, me'achat, v'sheish me'ot shana barishon, be'echad lachodesh. So it was in... Noah, right? In the in, in I'm reading it in a hyper literal way, but it will be germane to understand what's going on here. Um, and behold, in the one and six hundredth year, in the first, on the first of the month. In English, how would you really translate this? You would say in the six hundred and first year, in the first day of the first month. But that's actually as a translation itself, taking sides, as it were, in this debate between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Eliezer, as the Gemara will now explain. Rabbi Meir Savar, Mida Akati Yom Echad Hu, the Ayel Bashana, the Kakari Lashana. Ah, when it said 601, it means that, um, I'm sorry, it says, Shmamina Yom Echad Bashana, Chash Bashana. When it says one and 600 years in the first, on the first day, I mean, the first day of the first month, what it means is that it is one day into the 601st year. But that's like a 601st year has, has passed. One day is like the whole year. That's why it's calling it year 601. Year 601 is actually, it's not because 601 years have elapsed. 600 years have elapsed, but one day into the 601st year has elapsed. Rabbi Yezus says, you know, I would accept what you say had it said in 601 years. It will be correct. Now that it said one and six hundred, shana of Sorry, shana kai. The years goes by six hundred. Umay achat. What does achat mean? Archalta de achat ka amar. Oh, I think I just said this. I think I just said this backwards. Wait, I just totally read this wrong. One second. 
Shmamina Yom Echav Shana Chasuv. Yeah, but you know, he says no. Had it said yeah, Shish Me'ot Vachat Shana, six hundred and one years, it would be a, a, according to what you say. But that's not what it says in the pasuk. It says Vachat Vashish Me'ot Shana. So Shana, the the word Shana goes on the six hundred, right? And what's Achat? At Chalta de Achat Ka'amar. Sorry, Rabbi Mayer though holds that it's actually six hundred and two years, six hundred and second year. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And Rabbi Eliezer holds. No, it's still 601. It's the 601st year. We're into that. Rabbi Eliezer, my time. How come he holds what he holds? 30 days have to elapse. 30 days are like a whole year. The fact that it says means that one day in the month is like the entire month has passed. Barishon means the first month. Be'echad, in the first, Lachodesh. In the first day, it's like the whole month has elapsed. Midakat yom echad u'da'ayal b'chodesh, kakari le'chodesh, shema mina yom echad b'chodesh, chashib chodesh, u'mid yom echad b'chodesh, chashib chodesh. If one day in a month is like the whole month, it goes by units. Day, month, year. So if it says specifically that one day of the month is like a month, so shloshim yom b'shana, chashub b'shana. One day will be accorded one month rather be recorded like a like an entire uh, an entire year, yeah. Um, and the chodesh has its count, and the the year has its count, right? In other words, that's that's how we we arrange it. And essentially, they both have a differing view, you know, different perspectives. Depending how you look at the pasuk, you could either see it as saying six hundred and one years have elapsed, we're in the six hundred second year. Or we could say no, one month in the six hundred first year has elapsed, and 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 uh, it's not really one month; it's the first day of the month. But it's as if the entire month has passed. It's a question of units. Yeah, this is what spawns the discussion to get into the idea of the question of when the world was created, because we're going to try to understand. It'll circle back to this in a while. What is the Rishon being referenced here? Is it Nisan or is it Tishrei? So the argument for Nisan should be very strong. Moshe Rabbeinu wrote the Sefer Torah, and whenever it refers to Rishon, Shani, Shlishi, Bechodesh Rishon, Bechodesh Shani, that's the that's the counts that it means. Yeah, Rabbi, that's that that is in fact one of the opinions. Rabbi Yeshua holds Benisan Nivra Olam. Rabbi Eliezer disagrees. He thinks the world was created in Tishrei, and that prior to the moment. The Jewish people are differentiated from the rest of the world. The world counted according to what? To Tishrei. And it continued to count according to Tishrei. And we continue to count according to Tishrei for non Jewish kings for that reason. And that's. Achorosh Hazel for sure refers to Nisan. Achorosh Hazel Achem, Rosh Chodashim. That's for you, for the Jewish people. But the calendar for the non-Jewish world stayed Tishrei. Rabbi Eliezer maintains the beginning of the world, the creation of the world, was in Chodesh Tishrei. And that's the, actually, believe it or not, that's the segue into the next Gemara that we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll learn it, uh, you know, a first a first uh, round of it uh, tonight, just to cover a little ground. Excuse me, I didn't go too far. I didn't go into Tosfot or any of the Rishon, really. I just wanted to cover the ground. You get to this point because we're sort of starting a new unit now. Hopefully, we'll be able to, to make it go. But again, we'll, we'll learn next week, God willing, same time uh, as well. And that is, um, well, let's first, I guess, learn the Gemara. There are many questions that arise about this Gemara. There's a bracket here that says, Michal de Tarvayu Svirel Hu Benisa Nivra Olam. See that? Yeah. Yeah. It must be that both Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Meir hold the world is created. In Nisan, if you look in Rashi, second uh, one, two, three, four, five lines up from the bottom, wide line, wider lines of Rashi, or third line down in the wider lines of Rashi, uh, right here on ten B. Mifla Tarvayu, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Lazar, Deha Tarvayu Modu Shizuhai Tachilat Shana. They both agree that it's the beginning of a year, right? Six hundred and one years, six hundred and two years into the six hundred first year, that kind of thing. The linear is this Rashi. The Logar Sinolai. We do not say this. The Diyama Karabi Eliezer Svir Lahu. No, maybe it, it, they follow Rabbi Eliezer's opinion. Rabbi 
Rashi says that line really does not belong. And the reason why it does not belong is because Rabbi Eliezer, who's one of the Bari Plukta, Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Meir, are arguing here. Rabbi Eliezer, in a minute, we're going to quote this well-known uh, piece that Rabbi Eliezer holds, Betishri Neva Ha'olam. So in one place he says, Betishri Neva Ha'olam, and in the other place he holds, Benisan? No. Rashi says this, this, this thing should be in brackets. Now, normally, the Girsa of Rashi has a very uh, noticed, noticeable impact on whatever happens in the text of the Vilna Shas. Rashi will say, Hachi Garcinan, and give you a whole Girsa, and you look in the Gemara, and it looks exactly like what Rashi said. How come? Because the Vilna Shas very often just took whatever Rashi said. It's Rashi. He wrote it in. But the reason why the Gemara, the Vilna Shas, did not, the printers, did not take out this line that's in parentheses is because some achlok at Rashi and Tosfot if this line belongs. Rashi's logic is, you can't say that this shows that both of them agree that the world is created in Nisan, very simply because Rabbi Eliezer, in a minute, is going to tell us, so clearly that's what he holds. So if you look in the bottom Tosfot, Michlal Tarvayu, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Eliezer, Sviralu, the Nisan, Nivra Olam, Daha Tarvayu Modu, Shezuhai Tatchilat Hashana. Perush, what does that mean? That's the beginning of the year, that Nisan is the beginning of the year. Da Kol Modim, Tibarishan, Hu Nisan. The Nisan Ikre Rishon. The Torah explicitly tells us Nisan equals the Chodesh Rishon. Dichtiv, a Chodesh is Elechem, Gomer Rishon. Upirish, Bekuntris, the Logar Sinan Le. We don't, uh, we, we don't, we don't hold of this, 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 this line. Why? The Dilma Krabi Eliezer Sphere Lehu, Vahai Rishon, Lav Nisan, Hu Alatishrei. With Meshu, Hu Rishon, Libriat Olam, Ulamin Hashanim, Karele Rishon. Right? And and uh I, 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 uh that that is a verbatim quote from the Rashi we just read. Venira de la Olam Garcin and Line, but it seems that really you should say that line. Why? The Diak Meha Dim Ita, the Savre, the Tishri Nivra Olam, Dilma Hai Rishon Nisan, the Kari Le Rishon. Uh that 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 if you hold that in Tishrei the world is created. So maybe, so so how could you say, oh, where am I? V'diyeh, meha, meha. The im ita, if you say, im yesh. The savre betishre nivra ha'olam, dilma hai rishon nisan, v'kari le rishon, lefi shehu rishon lechodashim, v'amun mabul shana v'chetzi, v'tu lo teiduk minei, yom echad v'shana chashav shana. So if you're going to say betishre, Benisan Nivra Ha'olam, according to one, and Tishri according to the other. Let's play this out. Let's see how Eliezer really held Betishri Nivra Ha'olam. But everyone, according to Tosfot, has to agree that when it says Uchodesh Harishon, it's Nisan. What would come out of this? It would come out that according to Rabbi Eliezer, who, if he actually really holds Betishri Nivra Ha'olam, the model was not a year, it was a year and a half. It started in Tishrei went to the, not Nisan of that year, not Tishrei of the next year, but the following Nisan. Rishon, there's Rishon. Mm -hmm. And then, if that was true, then you know what? You can't say that Yom Echad B'Shana is Chash Shana. Because it wasn't a year that elapsed, but a year and a half that elapsed. Ergo, what do we say instead? No. In this Machlok at Rabbi Yez and Rabbi Meir, they both hold that the world itself was created in Chodesh Nisan. Now, you should ask me now, well, Tosfot saw the Gemara, the next Gemara, Rabbi Yezer is the same person, and he holds Betishri Neva Ha'olam. So you have to really wait for the uh, for the answer on this for uh, a little bit later. Um, I'll give it away now as a punchline. Just set your mind spinning, and we'll come back to it. Because I, I sometimes think about this, believe it or not, when we're reciting our liturgy together with Davening and Rosh Hashanah. The Bali Tosfot come up with the idea to reconcile Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yehoshua, who holds Benisa Nivra Olam, we're going to see that Machloket presently. And Rabbi Yezer, who here, according to this Gemara, according to Tosfot, Rabbi Yezer seems to say the world is created in Nisan. Hold on to your hats, as they say. Rabbi Yezer holds that Rosh Hashanah was when a Kodesh Baruch Hu had the Machshava to create the world. And that was already Briyat HaOlam. But when did it become physical? In Nisan. Sof Ma'aseh B'Machshava Tchila. The Maisa is in Nisan, but the Machshava happened the prior Tishrei. So Bali Tosfot 
reconcile the whole thing. When when you see that Rabbi Yezer here is Mikal Tar Bari Svirlu, but it's Nivra Olam, and Rabbi Yezer is one of the Bari Plukta, how come two seconds later it says Batishri Nivra Olam? Uh, well, that's because when it said Tishri Nivra Olam, he didn't mean physically. He agrees that that's a Nisan. He thought ideation out of the board. Now, that is mind bending and mind boggling on so many levels, so many levels, having to do with the lack of existence of time, the notion that there are months at the moments of creation, that there are months before the months, that there's a time before time. It's, it's quite mind boggling. But uh, otherwise, it's hard to reconcile how to figure this out. Rashi says, I have a better idea. Take your eraser and take out that line because Rabbi Yezer clearly holds Batishri Nivra Olam. And so it goes. Let's make a laning to see the two sides, Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yeshua, to appreciate. We've seen, you've heard this in many drushes throughout your life, many times in the last 16 years, that's for sure. And you'll hear it this year also because this is like a seminal uh, Gemara over here. We try to understand what's going on. Tanya. We're uh, one, two, three, four, five lines up from the bottom on 10B. But yet, you, first taste, it's like, whoa, according to Tosfot, so how they can reconcile? Oh, yeah, the, the Machshava was before in Tishrei, the Maisa was in Nisan. Okay. Tanya Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Betishri Nivra Olam, Betishri Noldu Avot, Betishri Meitu Avot, but Pesach Nolad Yitzchak. Everyone agrees to that one. Everyone agrees to that one. Rosh Hashanah Yatsa Yosem Beit Hasurin. Everyone agrees to that one. Top of the next page, Yud Aleph. Rosh Hashanah Batla Avoda Me'avotenu Mitzrayim. Everyone agrees to that one. Benisa Nigalu. Everyone agrees to that. But Rabbi Yezer says, B'tishri Atidin Ligail. Then comes Rabbi Yeshua, disagreeing with Rabbi Yezer, and he says, Rabbi Yeshua Omer, Benisa Nivra Ola. So there he disagrees. Benisa Noldu Avod. Disagrees with Rabbi Yezer. Benisa Meitu Avod. Disagrees. The Pesach Nolad Yitzchak, just like Rabbi Yezer, or Shon Nifkadar Sarif Rachav Le Vechana, excuse me, everyone agrees. Rosh Hashanah Yatsa Yatsa Bid Asurin, everyone agrees. Rosh Hashanah Batla Avodah Mi Avotenu, everyone agrees. Bimitzrayim, everyone agrees. Benisan Nigalu, everyone agrees. But says Rabbi Yeshua, Benisan Atidin Ligael. Yeah. And what ensues in the Gemara following is trying to understand the rationale for Rabbi Eliezer and for Rabbi Yeshua based on the psukim from Briyat HaOlam. After it will go through all sorts of psukim, and then it'll go through each of the events that transpired here, finally, 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 it'll come swing back around on page, uh, we won't get there anytime soon, uh, we'll, we'll swing all the way back on page 11b, you just see the line, so you understand where the, the off-ramp was to talk about this issue, and we we're getting back on the highway, on 11b, about halfway down the page, uh, halfway down the page, the first words are Min Hamaziken. Vazel Tamayu the Tanya Bishnat Sheish Meot Shana Lachai No Bishana B'Chodesh Hashemi B'Shiva Asa Yom L'Chodesh, and it's going to start talking about Noach again, and it's Rabbi Yisua and Rabbi Yezer. It's a whole thing, but that's how we got into the into the discussion in the first place. It's interesting. It ends up swinging back around to discuss Noach and also the the years and when it happened. Was it in ER? Was it in Was it in uh, Was it in Cheshvan? When does the flood start, et cetera? So we'll have to come back to this next week, just sort of whet the appetite. But um, obviously much more to say. I couldn't resist doing the Rashi Tosa. We got a little, little machloka between the two of them. But we'll see how it plays out. It's a fascinating Gemara. There's some hashkafa, some halacha, and certainly a lot of uh, mind-boggling issues surrounding dates and times. But you'll have to come back for that next week. I'd come for tonight. I got to go to the Shiva house. Okay, next week, 7 o'clock. Okay, that's it.